banking service and regulation norms. We all know that the Indian banking industry is passing through a phase of customers market. The customers have more choices in choosing their banks. In this lesson, we shall learn regarding the corporate banking and factors affecting the rate of interest, the role of banks to control the inflation and economic development, role of retail banking, statutory requirements of maintaining reserves. After going through this presentation, you should be able to describe banking corporate, explain interest rate, know the roles of banks to control the inflation and economic development, describe factors affecting the demand for loan funds, benchmark prime lending rate, identify retail banking and its role, learn statutory requirements of maintaining reserves, understand the non-SLR funds. Corporate banking typically refers to financial services offered to large clients and wholesale clients. Although many wholesale clients are large corporations, they may also include other institutions like pension funds, governments and other semi-public entities. Corporate banking is a very profitable division of banks, far more profitable than retail banking, which is aimed towards households. It is a bank that provides checking account, savings account and money market accounts and that accepts time deposit. Sometimes the amount of money you borrow makes a difference in your interest rate. Different states have different regulations and requirements that result in varying business costs. For lenders, these costs are frequently passed to the consumer in the form of an interest rate. Varying cost means varying interest rates across the nation. The RBI has the power to raise and lower interest rates. This ultimately affects the interest rates charged to the consumers. For adjustable rate mortgage loans, interest rates are tied to an index. Variations in an index might affect the interest rate of a particular loan, both for the initial rate offered and for the interest rate paid over the time. The interest rates are basically dependent on the demand and supply of money in the market. The amount of money available to spend in an economy is mostly determined by the country's central bank. If interest rates rise, households and businesses will likely allocate more of their asset holdings into interest-bearing accounts, usually non-classified as money, and will hold less in the form of money. The equilibrium interest rate in the economy is that rate which equalizes money supply and money demand. Interest rate sensitivity means measure of how much the price of a fixed income asset will fluctuate as a result of changes in the interest rate environment. Securities that are more sensitive will have greater price fluctuations than those with less sensitivity. This type of sensitivity must be taken into account when selecting a bond or other fixed income instrument that the investor may sell in the secondary market. Interest rate sensitivity means measure of how much the price of a fixed income asset will fluctuate as a result of changes in the interest rate environment. The most widely used and most powerful method of central banks to influence inflation and the currency value of a country is through the modification of base rates. This significance of base rates lies in the fact that this is the interest at which commercial banks registered in the country of the central bank can take loans from the central bank. The reason why banks would need to take loans from the central bank under normal circumstances is that commercial banks can further loan that out to businesses and people at higher interest rate than the base rate to cover its cost and to make a profit. The reason interest rates influence inflation is because of price growth of products. If the base rate is low, there is more investment and the economy grows faster. If employment increases, the number of people able to purchase a product or service also increases. So merchants, producers, etc. can have higher prices than say last year.
If interest rates increase, the whole process decreases. Companies cannot raise their prices as much, so inflation decreases. When the central bank's interest rate increases, economy also grows faster. If the economy grows faster, people need more of the currency. For example, because more people have a job, more people are paid their monthly salary in that currency. So the demand for the currency increases. So the worth, that is, the value of the currency also increases. So buyers of the currency on the market will accept a lower amount in that currency for their foreign currency. There are many factors which affect the demand of the loanable funds. Higher interest rates decrease the quantity of loans demanded as the cost of investment projects rise with the interest rates. An investment project would need to be pretty productive to justify a loan at this rate. This is how the demand curve gets its negative slope. If capital tools are more productive, firms are willing to pay more for loanable funds. Changes in capital productivity shift the demand curve. Changes in the market for loans occur when some factor shifts supply or demand, just as loan supply is affected by the desire to smooth consumption across income variations, so is demand. Often individuals borrow more demand loans when income is temporarily low. Banks are facing a tough competition in the market to enhance their income. Banks are now diversified in non-traditional market. The change in the profit structure of banks is the effect of improving the profitability without increasing the traditional credit risk. Performance in terms of profitability has come to be important for Indian banks as well as after the banking sector reforms. According to RBI guidelines, banks are free to fix benchmark prime lending rate BPLR for credit limits over Rs 2 lakh with the approval of their respective boards. BPLR has to be declared and made uniformly applicable at all the branches. The banks may authorize their Asset Liability Management Committee ALCO, to fix interest rates on deposits and advances subject to their reporting to the board immediately thereafter. Banks are free to determine the rates of interest without reference to their BPLR and regardless of the size in respect of finance granted to intermediary agencies excluding those of housing for on lending to ultimate beneficiaries and agencies providing input support discounting of bills loans for purchase of consumer durables. RBI has issued certain guidelines for interest rates in banks. The banks should charge interest on loans or advances or cash credits or overdrafts or any other financial accommodation granted or provided or renewed by them or discount usance bills in accordance with the directives on interest rates on advances issued by Reserve Bank of India from time to time. The interest at the specified rates shall be charged at monthly rates. IBA issued some guidelines in order to enhance transparency in banks, pricing of the loan products as also to ensure that the BPLR truly reflects the actual cost. The benchmark PLR would be the ceiling rate for credit limit up to Rs 2 lakh as hitherto. Banks are also advised that in the interest of customer protection and to have greater degree of transparency in regard to actual interest rates charged to borrowers, they should continue to provide information on maximum and minimum interest rates charged together with the benchmark PLR. The Retail Banking Report encompasses extensive study and analysis of this rapidly growing sector. It primarily covers analysis of the present status, current trends, major issues and challenges in the growth of the retail banking sector. The retail banking strategies of banks are undergoing major transformation as banks adopt a mix of strategies like organic growth, acquisitions and alliances. Banks play many different roles in local and global economy. Retail banking is that part of banking which deals with individual customers and small businesses. Retail banks offer a variety of important services to their customers. Retail banks play a critical role in their home economies and their activities have implications for the global economy as well.
retail banks as well as commercial banks had provided subprime mortgages to consumers who were not qualified for the size of the loans they received. Some banks turned to consolidation as a way of cutting expenses in order to survive difficult economic conditions. Often consolidation works as intended but it also has its limitation. While retail banks have their share of problems, it is anticipated that with the massive infusion of capital into the banking and financial services sector by the federal government's economic stimulus program, most retail banks will survive and the smaller retail banks may seek to merge with other banks. RBI is empowered to increase the said rate of CRR to such higher rate not exceeding 20% of the net demand and time liabilities under the RBI Act 1934. CRR on 31st March 2009 was 5.75%. In terms of Section 42 1A of RBI Act 1934, the scheduled commercial banks are required to maintain in addition to the balances prescribed under Section 42 1 of the Act, an additional average daily balance, the amount of which shall not be less than the rate specified by the RBI in the notification published in the Gazette of India, such additional balance being calculated with reference to the excess of the total of the NDTL of the bank as shown in the return referred to in Section 42.2 of the RBI Act 1934 over the total of its NDTL at the close of the business on the date specified in the notification. In terms of Section 24.2a of the BR Act 1949, all scheduled commercial banks in addition to the average daily balance which they are required to maintain under Section 42 of the RBI Act 1934 are required to maintain in India in cash or in gold valued at a price not exceeding the current market price or in unencumbered approved securities valued at a price as specified by the RBI from time to time. The procedure to compute total net demand and time liabilities for the purpose of SLR under Section 24.2b of BR Act 1949 is similar to the procedure followed for CRR purpose. The entire investment portfolio of the banks, including SLR securities, will be classified under three categories, viz. held to maturity, available for sale, and held for trading. Investment classified under held to maturity category need not be marked to market and will be carried at acquisition cost unless it is more than the face value. Non-SLR funds are those funds which are issued by public sector undertakings and other corporate bodies. PSU bonds are debt instruments which are issued by various public sector units of the country. Features of PSU bonds are fixed tenure. Like any other fixed income security, PSU bonds have fixed maturity, secured or unsecured. Secured bonds are those which are secured by some underlying asset. Unsecured bonds do create any charge over the assets of the issuer. Dematerialized with effect from June 30, 2002, all entities are required to hold bonds in dematerialized form only. All bonds are now issued in compulsory DMAT form and cannot be converted into physical certificates. Rating Issuers get their bonds rated by rating agencies like ICRA, Crisil, etc. in order to attract investors and increase liquidity. It is prudent to invest only in bonds having high rating as rating signifies the safety of principal as well as the interest. The Reserve Bank of India RBI has asked banks to limit their investments in unlisted corporate debt securities to 20% of total investments in such assets. The norms will apply to investment both in primary market as well as secondary market. Banks also should ensure that investments are made only in listed debt securities of companies which comply with the requirements of SEBI. Banks should also put in place proper risk management systems in respect of non-SLR investment. Now let's see how much you have learned till now. 
state whether the following statements are true or false. Capital productivity is a factor which will not affect the demand for loanable funds. False. Banks also should ensure that investments are made only in listed debt securities of companies which comply with the requirements of RBI. False. Interest rate sensitivity means measure of how much the price of a fixed income asset will fluctuate as a result of changes in the interest rate environment. True. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied so far. Corporate banking is a very profitable division for banks, far more profitable than retail banking, which is aimed towards households. Corporate banking is the broad term given to different banking services that large companies, governments or other big institutions need in order to function day to day. The interest rate is the key factor of an economy. The interest rates are basically dependent on demand and supply of money in the market. According to RBI guidelines, banks are free to fix benchmark prime lending rate BPLR for credit limits over Rs 2 lakh with the approval of their respective boards. Retail banking is that part of banking which deals with individual customers and small businesses. Non-SLR funds are those funds which are issued by public sector undertakings and other corporate bodies. Commercial banks are required to maintain with RBI an average cash balance, the amount of which shall not be less than 3% of the total of the net demand and time liabilities NDTL in India.